Welcome to the final community update video of the year. In this update, we will be discussing the future of Pine into 2022, as well as PinePhone Pro and PinePhone Keyboard production. This is the video version of the community update, which should give a synopsis, but it's not the full version, so go check that out. Also, thanks to JF, Alex, Brian, CounterPillow, Marek, and Lucas for helping out. And for more open source related content, check out my channel, Pizza Loving Nerd. We need to start by addressing a serious issue that happened in the community last week. There was some malware shared in the Pine64 chat with claims that it was a snake game. When installed with root access, it would wipe the system and exploit a vulnerability with the modem of the Pine phone. We took many actions to prevent this from happening again, including removing the malware from the chat, banning offending accounts, performing an internal investigation, consulting Matthew Hickey from Hacker House, securing the forums and wiki to include more rules for file uploads, notifying our user base, and getting law enforcement involved. We will update you once there is more info on the case, but we have good reason to believe that justice will be served. This was a gratifying but difficult year with component shortages and price hikes, shipping challenges and production difficulties, and these were just some of the problems we had to face this year. This forced us to prioritize things that we actually could deliver on, and with 2022 looking a bit better than 2021, we think that this was a painful but good strategy for us. Three decisions were made early in the year, including the decision to make the new single board computers based on the RK3566, make our own LoRa platform, and bring a higher-end Pine phone to the market. The Quartz 64 Model A was unveiled in February and made available two months later. June showed the SO Quartz Compute Module was shipped to developers recently, and both devices were met with a lot of interest, and this enabled software development for the platform to proceed very quickly, which allowed us to introduce the Pine Note, which also started shipping to developers recently. We also announced our LoRa-based communication platform this year called Pindio, which allows devices to communicate over very long distances without the need for a GSM or CDMA modem. Last but not least, we announced the PinePhone Pro this year, probably our most anticipated device we've ever completed. 2022 will most likely be about the PinePhone Pro and Quartz line of devices. By this time next year, if nothing bad happens, there will be tens of thousands of active PinePhone Pros in the wild, as well as a number of Pine Node testers and developers. We also hope to bring the PineBook Pro and PineTab back after Chinese New Year's, thanks to LCD prices being a bit lower lately. Another thing on the agenda is launching our LoRa range of PineDio devices, led on the software front by JF and LUP, as well as a number of other developers. They have been working on the PineDio gateway and the side nodes for much of the year. Thanks to their efforts, most of which have been documented in community updates, the PineDio platform has now reached a degree of software maturity. RTP has also contributed an Armbian build for the PineDio gateway, which makes the initial setup and device operating simple. We don't have any firm dates yet, but we should have a timeline for PineDio rollout established by the end of the month. We will also introduce another small community-driven project at the start of next year, similar to a community-driven device like the PineSoul or the PineTime. This time though, we would like to create something that can be enjoyed by enthusiasts and mainstream consumers alike. It will be the first open device of its kind, and we are making it from the ground up. There will be a dev board for it, which will most likely come out the same time as the device itself, and the announcement should follow in quarter 1, 2022. And while our plans to use all winners, Risk 5 SoC stalled, our interest in the platform has not gone away. We are interested in both microcontrollers as well as more powerful Linux-capable SoCs, and we are already drawing up plans on how each type can be used in innovative ways. These devices will not likely appear anytime soon, so don't hold your breath, but if supply chain and component shortages go away, we will surely be taking a closer look at what RISC-V can offer to the community. Lastly, we are working on improving the shipping time of our most popular devices, we don't want to make any promises that we cannot live up to, but we are exploring an option that would allow us to ship globally more regularly, starting with the Pine Note due to lower sales, which allows us to test it out on a less popular device. We will keep you posted on this. Many developers have been receiving their PinePhone Pro units, and we are pleased to say that the rollout is on schedule. We are also happy to see positive feedback coming from developers with no major flaws in the developer units, and so we plan on opening the PinePhone Pro sales late this year or early next month. And the exact date depends on how fast we can test for quality insurance on the phones, but there will be a full blog post when the PinePhone Pro becomes available. 
Keep in mind that this phone is solely for early adopters and those willing to explore the new hardware capabilities or contribute to development. Do not expect full functionality yet. Some of the new functionality added in the past month have been USB for data and video, sound output, a mainline Linux smartphone which helped breathe new life into the dream of mobile Linux, and the modem, including voice calls. Keep in mind though that these features are still in the development stage and we still need camera support and power management improvements similar to the crust on the original Pine phone. However, we also have loads of images available, including images from Manjaro, as well as Postmarket OS, Mobian, Dank Nix, Arch, and Nix OS. Also, the final design of the PinePhone Pro will feature a 8 megapixel front facing camera instead of the 5 megapixel camera used on the original PinePhone's rear camera. However, the rest of the specs will stay the same. Lastly, you should be able to see a PinePhone keyboard at the very beginning of January, as well as the Laura PineDio back case for the PinePhone. Given that the keyboard has already been in prototyping and testing for over 6 months, another few weeks to get it right is a small price to pay. We will be manufacturing a lot so the chance of selling out is very low, so everyone who wants one will be able to get one. Thanks to Lup and JF, the Pine Dio back case is now functional and will be available in the Pine store as early as next week. We have also made some progress on the fingerprint back case too. Zachary has delivered a custom fingerprint testing OS image used for QA and if the factory finds the test build sufficient for testing, then we will see the fingerprint case launch in quarter 1 2022. In the past month, the Quartz 64 has developed a lot. Linux 5.16 has a Quartz 64 Model A device tree which allows the mainline Linux kernel to boot completely out of the box on the Quartz 64, and we can also get video output on the Quartz 64 thanks to the VOP2 patch set. It's in a very rough state with support for only 1080p 60Hz monitors, but it's better than nothing. Both Manjaro and PG Wipeout CL Debian installer have already had the patch applied which allows people interested to have a go without manually patching their kernel. There is also now a port of the TinaCore EDK2 to the Quartz 64 which means that it is now fully UEFI available. The port is still early but it's a move towards getting the board ARM system ready certified. The port however does require some rock chip blobs and we are still waiting on them to release ARM trusted firmware sources for the RK3566 and the RK3568. To improve the booting experience, PG Wipeout has been working on getting mainline U-boot working on the board. There is some hackery and binary blobs involved, but he did manage to get mainline U-boot running. As for the Linux kernel, SPDIF audio works out of the box as well as analog audio and HDMI audio. Also, SPI nodes have been submitted to the device tree which allow people to enable the SPI node in the Quartz 64 device tree and add their SPI device definitions to it. Rockchip has also submitted some patches to the kernel including patches for handling the SATA, USB 3, and PCIe instances, and PG Wipeout's Quartz 64 command line kernel has this patch too currently, and Sugar Zhang of Rockchip has contributed some SPDIF drivers to make it work with newer Rockchip SOCs. Also, the GPU is currently working and it can even thermal throttle if it gets too hot somehow. However, in counter pillows test, the GPU never got hot enough for that to happen. Many of these changes will affect the Pine Note since it uses the same SoC, so if someone makes any changes, it will be available in the Pine Note device tree. As always, you can see our continued progress on the Pine Wiki. Last month, we showed a 3D demo and we now got a demo of this working to control a racing game. Awesome! Affinity Time developers and contributors are working on some more great features. We won't detail them right now since they're still in development, but here's an overview on what you can expect from the future of Affinity Time. First off is the secure BLE bond, which allows bonding with a pin code and encrypted communication. Next up is a file system API that allows companion apps to access the internal file system. This not only allows changing user interface settings, but will also work to store pictures, logos, fonts, translations, and much, much more. Note that these are not stable yet and not released in the public build of AffiniTime, but if you'd like to try them out, check the development branch of AffiniTime. The PinePhone LoRa backcase will allow the PinePhone to send and receive LoRa messages thanks to the integrated LoRa module and antenna. In the last few weeks, JF brought up the backplate and has succeeded in receiving LoRa messages. There is still work in progress, but it is a good proof of concept. There's also three articles documenting the technical side of it. Lup is currently working on bringing up NutX on the PineDio stack, and he has also documented a new prototype version of the stack we received last month with a new enclosure and a GPS and motion sensor. Lastly, the PineCube has already been usable with MJPEG encoding for a while, although it's still not perfect because of the fact that MPEG encoding uses a lot 
of CPU power, which isn't fun for its single core ARM Cortex A7 core. Luckily, the SoC has a hardware H.264 encoder core, which can encode video with only a little bit of CPU impact. The issue is that this only currently works with the ancient BSP 3.10 kernel. So, Gammy is working on reverse engineering the driver to get this working on mainline. So far, he has gotten a Debian build working with kernel 5.16, which will improve its performance by a lot. So, that was this month's Plan 64 news, and happy holidays!